Miss Mishi snuggled Sam's neck, waking him up. His hand found her pink fur and started petting. Ouch. Orbit, everything okay today? Yes, sir. Are you feeling well this morning? No, feel sick as hell. Well, you have an introductory appointment to jog around the station with a new alien species when you are up and around. Sam sat up in bed, feet hitting the floor, his hand still stroking Miss Mishi's arching back. Yeah, I could use it. It's not going to be fun. He rubbed the sleep goo from his eyes. Let me get dressed. When did they want to come over? Their leader, Tato, has already called over ten times inquiring about your status. He's quite eager to meet you in person. Orbit appeared next to Sam's bed in holographic form. I commissioned the Infinigan repair shop to create a breather for him. It has already been delivered over and he has tested it out. Also, I had the grazers make a series of cakes and leave them along your jogging path for him to snack on. Sam stood up and walked over to his dresser. He slipped on a set of jogging shorts and a loose shirt. Which docks did they go to? There was space at the lower docks that could accommodate them, so I had them go there. Sam slipped on a shoe and started tying it. All right. Tell him I'll meet him there. Yes, sir. Sam stood in the main concourse. Numerous groups of peoples were milling to and from the docked ships. He stared at the door leading to the new creature's ship. It swung open abruptly and thick-chested, four-armed, two-legged creature with the fortune-telling face started charging at him. Sam stood his ground, and the creature ran around him in a circle like an overexcited dog. Sam turned, trying to see him, and laughed. He held out his hand for a high five. Tato spun on his hands, his legs shifting under him, and struck Sam's hand with one of his padded three-finger hands. Nice to meet you, Tato, Sam said. Sam only heard parts of the creature's speech, but Orbit translated it to his ear. Nice to meet you as well, Sam, Tato said. Sam looked around. The groups of other species were watching, stepping away from the commotion. Sam watched Tato continue to run around him. You're ready for us to jog then. Whenever you are. Sam smiled and started down the concourse, picking up speed. Tato bounced beside him, easily keeping pace. Sam went faster. Tato hooted and matched him. Orbit projected the designated course into Sam's glasses. Sam turned at the end of the concourse, entering into a thoroughfare. The two ran past a series of shops, a variety of eateries, and a new club. So, Sam started. You have to run to breathe? No. Our lungs stay saturated. Moving the body moves the blood. Sam reached a stable speed and Tato matched. This a good speed for you? Am I going to slow? This is good. Relaxing. Meditative. Good. Sam followed the prescribed path and turned into a side hall. Are there other species on your ship? Yes, Tadao said, loping beside him. We have our crops and support species. No, I mean, who pilots your ship? Tato turned one of his four eyes, staring at him. That is a humorous question. You know I am the captain of my vessel. My family and I operate the ship. How do you do that if you're always having to keep moving? It is odd to you, isn't it? Our station engineers are a race of massive, tentacled whale creatures. My dead captain's clone had my clone's baby, and she has her face on a giant tarantula monster thing here on the station. I'm pretty good with odd. Tato swiveled his undulating head. I did not understand most of that. Very confusing. But it sounds like you deal with new things often. You will be able to grasp it then. My crew and I delegate tasks between everyone. I run past, initiate a task on console, and through communications, we run as a line finishing task after task. We do many things in a continuous loop. Sam turned into one of the misty halls of the original station. Tadoa followed and continued talking. Things that require a designated individual, such as talking to you. We have our little hand data slates. Tadao extended tiny hands from his chest near his head. In the them, he held a rectangular display pad. Big tasks we work together. Digital things we can do on these and share. Sam ran through a pack of squishies, and the herd parted. Tato bounced through them as he ran, several of his eyes focusing on them. What are those things? I call them squishies. They're kind of tasty. I don't know if you can eat them, but I'll look into it if you want. Curious. Yes, we can run tests. 
Our food production and energy output is at maximum capacity. If they are edible, I will gladly work or trade for them. Sam turned another corner. My AI had special cakes made for you. There is one up ahead if you want to try it. Sam pointed to a baked item on a floating tray. Tato grabbed it with one of his upper hands and spun in midair, landing on his free hands and feet. The bread cake moved to his small hands and his face parted, revealing spiral lines of teeth inside the four grooves. The cake moved slowly into his face, and the parts started alternating together, chewing it. Tato rotated his head back and forth. This is good. Compliments to your AI. Sam looked at the breather attached along his spine, tubes hooked into breathing holes. The breather comfortable? Tato chewed up another piece before talking, all while still easily keeping pace with Sam. It rubs, will cause wear on my flesh. We will work on the modifications after this test run. Tato finished the cake and looked at Sam. You have a blood muscle inside you, correct? Sam nodded. Yeah, we have hearts. Seems like evolution favors hearts. My world species are aberrations. Evolution doesn't play favorites. Whatever works reproduces. Tato hooted and bounced a bit. I know this, Sam. The sad has come to my people after seeing how alone we are out here. Orbit opened a hull door and let the two runners into the clam farms. Sam ran through and stayed on the floating walkway, waving at his grazer friends. Tato's legs and arms hit the walkway and he recalibrated to the movement. I like this. The bounce back feels nice. Sam looked over his shoulder at the creature. My people have a symbiotic species that you remind me of. They run around a lot and when excited they move like you. We call it getting the zoomies. Tadao looked over the clam field with several of his eyes, one focused on Sam. Zoomies. Fast moving. Excited. Happy. I like it. Sam smiled. I can't pronounce your species name as you do. Mind if I use zoomies? Tadao shifted, turning in a spiral, running on his rested hands. I approve. Tell me about this place. Sam looked out across the ponds. The original builders of this station, the Stickians, they love these clams. Our resident Stickians sell them off to their homeworlds in bulk. It's a big revenue stream for several of our station species. Tato looked at the grazers as they ran past. They have an edge to their gaze. They are concerned. Sam laughed. Yeah, they are skittish. It took them a while to get used to me jogging through here. They got used to me. Sam took a few breaths. They let me help them in the farms. I come down often when I need to get grounded. Rest, relax, find oneself. Grounded? Exactly. You are a wise species like ourselves. Sam and Tado reached the end of the clam farm and exited through a set of hull doors back into the misty corridors. Sam looked over at Tado. Far from it. We're territorial, easily angered, egotistic and sometimes just mean. You do not seem so. Sam pointed at another cake up ahead. Tato reached with a free hand and grabbed it, maneuvering it up to his small hands. He broke off a piece and started eating on it. I can be, though. Many can be. It sounds like you take steps not to be. Tato put another piece in his mouth parts. Sam thought on the topic while Tato finished his second cake. After he finished the last bite, Tato looked at Sam. I will need to release waste soon. I do not wish to make a mess on your station and I do not know if my inner biotics are stable in your environment. Orbit calculated the course back and put it on Sam's HUD. Think you can hold if we turn back now? Yes, that is why I brought it up. I figured now would give us adequate time with some leeway. Sam laughed and started on the new course. You find my situation humorous. I was just thinking about what your world must be like. Everything moving all the time. How did you make anything? Tato hooted at the thought. Understanding. I like you are attempting it. Thank you, Sam. Tato bounded, thinking for a moment as they jogged down the hall. My people followed the herds. We pulled the fruits. We ate, made waste, made more of our own kind, all in rhythm with our world. That rhythm has always been in us, the Count. We counted together, counted the fruits, counted the herd, counted our steps, counted the pulses in our own bodies. The count led us to make things, just as I figured it did your people. Am I wrong? Sam felt his footsteps. I don't really count, but my people do when we need to. 
We started counting probably when we started trading, and we trade a lot. I have seen that. You have many species here, all producing. Quite spectacular. The other stations around the rim have one or maybe two living together. We found it fascinating that you are able to keep so many here. Maybe that is your movement. Yeah, Sam started. It's what makes my people odd. We like taking care of things. Tato hooted. You do smell good. It has been pleasurable running with you. Sam turned the corner back into the main thoroughfare. Tato, I'm going to petition for your people to be added to the clouder. I think the Zoomies could thrive here. I thank you, Sam. This rift void was going to be the death of us. We owe you a debt for even allowing us a port of call, let alone considering us as potential allies. The two neared the Zoomies' docking port. I've got a few ideas I'm going to get started on, Sam said. Care to jog with me tomorrow? I would appreciate that. I will be center of attention describing the new scenery. You have blessed us, Sam. Sam came to a stop as Tadao continued on toward the door. He waved. I'll get another breather made up if you want to bring a guest with you. Tato waved back and entered the open door. Thank you. Sam went back to his apartment and showered. After he sat and poured himself a bowl of cereal and a fresh cup of coffee. Orbit. Orbit appeared in the seat across the table from him. Yes, sir. I was looking through the Marketplace app yesterday and I saw Crunchcheek was selling something. Some sort of racetrack shares or something. Can you pull that up? Done. Yes. He is looking for investors and political allies to build a racetrack here on Twain, sir. Sam laughed. He's been wanting that since he was little. I like it. Let's make that happen. Sir, the SFP are against it. The thought of having high-speed vehicles moving chaotically through the station puts them on edge. Greenfeet and the other Stickians side with the SFP due to their trade agreements. The Grazers do as well, as they have similar feelings. And because they do, the Kratoks side with them due their alcohol trade. Their main concern is the safety aspect. Correct. The proposed plan from Crunchcheek is very dangerous. I am hesitant to have you endorse it. Pull up the proposition for me. Orbit rendered a hologram over the table, depicting Twain in yellows and greens, and the proposed racetrack in red. Sam looked it over. Sam touched it. All right. Instead of a flat plane, make it an enclosed tube and have it follow my finger. Orbit did as instructed, winding the tube around the existing structures and along the portions of the outer shell. All right. Now adjust it to have maintenance tunnels around it housing water, power, air, waste, and anything else you can think of. Orbit did as instructed and added the appropriate tubes, adjusting the path of the main track where conflicts appeared. Sam looked it over. Now I want you to add running paths under it that connect to the main corridors for the Zoomies. Orbit did so. Sam took a bite of cereal, looking up at the racetrack. Nice. With that, the Zoomies won't run into people, and I think they could be a good delivery service. Orbit closed his eyes. Adjustments filtered over the projection. I added several more protective layers to the track and connections to main business corridors for the Zoomies tunnels. Sam smiled. Send it out to the senators and investors. Attach a file on the history of human racetrack betting and predicted revenue. We are going to need more hotels if it passes, sir. Sam took a sip of coffee. Attach that, too. We can use that to get the obelisk vote. Make sure the zoomies are added into the proposition. Make it as win-win as possible. Yes, sir. Russell rang on Fufang's door. The Infinigan let the human in. Russell stepped in and over a pile of refuse and machinery. The door shut behind him, and Russell immediately saw the alien-made cat. What the hell is that thing? Fufang reached over and pet the colorful, scaled creature. It's my cat. I call him Color Coat. Very sweet, I get why humans like them. Russell shook his head. That ain't no cat. Fufang motioned for him to pet the creature. It is, well. It's based off one. I admit I made it in my own image. Russell pet the creature, and its body vibrated with a gurgling noise. That ain't right, bro. Fufang looked up at him, head tilted. Did you not want me to make you one? Russell shook his head. Not like that. That thing's too alien, but I do like the creativity.
Russell sat on a crystal seat stone. Think you could make something more earthly like that? Fu Fang bobbed his ears. I'll need data input. Can you get earth creatures for me to study? Russell nodded. Yeah, my cousin is dating the zookeeper tower. The three-legged aliens got all sorts of stuff there. Fu Fang stared at him for a moment. I don't want any trouble from the preservers. I don't want them knowing I got this tech. I like my job, I like my stuff, I don't want to lose it. Russell stood back up. Look, you want to do this or not? I'm going to make things anyway. I can't help it. I need the clams too. Yes, I'll make you your stupid earth cat. Just don't get caught. I don't need troubles. Russell smiled. Don't worry, little bud. I don't want trouble either. I'm good at this shit. Fu Fang pointed at his wrist. Money down and I'll get started. Rest after you get finished product. Russell touched his wrist pad and flicked over some clams. Gotcha. Get your supplies, lil' bro. I'll go get the rest. Fu Fang nodded at the human. Thank you. Russell winked at him. Thank you. He turned and stepped out of the cluttered habitat. The door shut behind him, and Russell walked down the hall, shaking his head. The shuttle entered into the designated approach lane to Twain. Stubborn had claimed a seat near the row window and watched as the space station grew larger. Three glowing life forms danced outside, fluttering around like sting bugs back home. The shuttle passed by the glowing creatures next on the outer hull and she pointed with her claw. Slayer, look! We're here! Slayer leaned over the Vitalian princess and admired the view. Amazing! Look at all the ships! Where did they all come from? Wonder what they are all like? She adjusted herself in her protective suit. Think they will allow our petition? He sat back in his chair, stretching his claws inside their coverings. I don't know. Callie said they would, but everything here has been so odd. Remember, they are not like us. They are different on every level you can imagine and more. Stubborn watched another of the light creatures as it hovered in the void near the station. Lights traced down its tentacles. I don't know. Those things out there talk like us. We may find others who have things in common with us. Let us hope not too much. The violence of Vitalia should be left back home. She adjusted her breathe regulator and sucked in fresher air. You think the curator did as she said? Yes. She has proven herself several times. I trust her. I hope so. I don't want to be stuck in these suits any longer. Slayer looked around at the numerous unsuited beings around them. She said they would build us a place here. I have no reason to doubt her. I read the files, but still I find it hard to believe invisible creatures are living on our skin. I don't feel them. Wouldn't we feel them? I don't know. You're the smart one, princess. Slayer looked over at the window as their shuttle entered through the hull wall into the inner station. Freighters lined up to drop of resources. He could see through windows into massive farms tended to by tiny dots of peoples. A craft flew by, with bright lights flashing on it. It is so busy. It is like a fur biter nest. Can you believe all this? He pointed over her. Look at that. His claw was aimed at a tall robotic being being constructed in a ship bay, parts of its chest open and exposed as creatures welded inside it. They know much we do not. Let's obey their rules. I'm going to keep my suit on, and you should do the same. Agreed. She flashed, her transmitter picking up the colors and sending them to his eye display. We need to build this alliance for our people. Our people will feast upon the stars. Our people will feast upon the stars, she replied. Sam was jogging with Tadao and his mate when Orbit rang him on his comm. Go ahead, Orbit. Olivia is on and wanting to speak with you. Sam looked at the two Zoomies running beside him through the halls. My apologies. I need to take a call. Tado spun his head, looking at him with several of his eyes. It is okay. We will take the long haul and circle around to you. You talk. Sam smiled. Thank you. He stopped and sat on a ledge in the hall, as the two took off running at full speed, put her through orbit. Hey, Sam. Well, hello, Olivia. How are you? Doing good. Everything okay? No Gallic raids or anything? He asked, yeah, yeah, everything is good. Dam stopped by for a bit, but he headed back to Sparrow. He mentioned that the Brumus might be getting its own crystal AI soon. You worried about it? No, the others seem all right. 
Curator has been amazing. She's been sending us optimization algorithms for the ship systems. They've helped us find several minor fractures. We've been upgrading parts this week. Sam smiled. I miss you. I miss you too, she said. After a pause, she continued. Sam, look, I have something I need to tell you. He sighed. Doesn't sound good. Long distance relationship, huh? No, no. It, it is good. Look, I don't know how to say it, so I'm just going to blurt it out. Olivia took a deep breath. I'm pregnant, Sam. Sam stood up in the hallway, stunned. Like how pregnant? The ship's air says it's a girl kind of pregnant. Oh, oh, wow. Wow, okay, well, what do you want to do? What do you mean, what do I want to do, Sam? I'm keeping her. No, no, of course, I mean, what do you want to do with me? What do you want to do with me? She parroted back. I can do anything I want, Sam. What do you want to do? Sam shut his eyes and took some slow breaths. Calm down, calm down. Motherfucker, did you really? Look, fuck you. Olivia, he said calmly, I love you. Do you want to come back? Do you want to stay on the Brumus? I want you back here with me if that's what you want. Olivia sighed over the calm. You ass, I love you. I do want to come back, but I don't know who can run this ship. I know a guy who can take over for you. I trust him. I'll see if he wants the job and get the paperwork started. Sam laughed. We're going to have a girl. Olivia sniffed as she started to cry. Yeah, the heir took a video with the scanner. I'll send it to you so you can see her. Sam started crying. We're going to need a bigger apartment. Oh? You're going to give up your bachelor pad? I'll rent it out. Sam laughed. I'm going to tell Asterion. Go have some drinks while you can. She laughed. You're on diaper duty soon. Oh shit, did you tell Dam? No, I figured you would want to. What will she be to Caroline? Cousins? Half-sisters? Olivia chuckled. I think we can go with cousins, less to explain. Sam looked down the hallway as he heard the two Zoomies approaching. I'm gonna tell people. I love you. I gotta get back to work, too. I love you, too, Sam. I'll call you again after shift, okay? Yes, oh, get home, I need to hug you. You idiot, I love you, go tell Asterion. Love you, Olivia, we're going to have a girl. As the comfrec terminated, he jumped up and punched the air. Tado ran around him, looking him over. Are you okay, Sam? Are you angered? Is there a situation? Sam started jogging down the hallway with the two. My mate is with child, he shouted. Tadao looked at his wife with two of his eyes. This is a good thing, correct? She slowly blinked confirmation to her husband. Sam laughed. Yeah, I'm going to be a dad. It's very good. Sam jumped and spun in the air, slapping the ceiling of the hall. He landed and ran to catch up. I'm excited. Sorry. I am glad it is a good thing, Sam. Family is a blessing. Sam teared up a bit. Stubborn and Slayer walked around the main trading ring. Stubborn leaned a bit as her worm shifted inside her backpack. I'm getting hungry. I am as well. We need to find our living space. I want to take this off. I'm starting to smell bad in here. I need to drop refuse. I am in the same situation, he replied. Slayer abruptly jumped to the side as two unknown creatures and a human ran past. The human was shouting, I'm going to be a dad! Stubborn and Slayer watched as the trio ran through the crowds. Different on every level, he said. Agreed. Slayer saw a console in the corner. He walked over to it and poked at it. Nothing happened. He poked again. Stupid console. Stupid station. This place is awful. An unfamiliar creature spoke via flashes on their communication displays. Hello? Are you in need of assistance? Stubborn stopped and looked around. Who are you? Where are you? I am Orbit, the station's AI. You two are the Vitalian ambassadors, correct? Stubborn stood straighter, making herself look bigger. We are. You can help us? Yes, ma'am, Orbit replied. Tracking indicates you have been wandering around since you departed the shuttle. Do you need directions to your habitat? Slayer's head flaps flickered tightly inside his helmet. Yes, that would help us greatly. Sending a map to your displays. Just follow the blue line, and you will reach your quarters. I will have a medical team waiting there for you. Stubborn hissed. 
We are not sick. Is this the same thing as why we need these suits? Yes, that is correct. Curator has sent files over. We will need to add your biology to our vaccination protocols. Do not worry. It is merely a precaution at this stage, but we do not desire any outbreaks. I need to drop refuse. We need to hurry, Stubborn said. Slayer sped up, nearing a jog. Follow me, princess. I will get us there. He flashed on the side to orbit. Thank you for helping us. We were starting to become irritated. My apologies for not helping sooner. Russell had taken access codes from Mysterian's datapad while he visited his cousin the cycle before. Now, he was walking through the zoo. The lab in the rear of the facility was open, and he walked right in. A small preserver was in the corner focused on operating three machines. Russell crept through the experiment racks towards the far wall. He reached a terminal that was monitoring the cold storage. Russell pulled up the codes on his data pad and started the communication. He looked over his shoulder. No one was watching. He turned back to the display and started looking through the file clusters. He found the node connecting to the DNA records and tried to enter. It was bio-locked beyond Asterian's access codes. Russell grit his teeth in anger. He was so close. He touched around on the display looking and found a transfer cache. The cache still had records in the buffer. There were feed organisms, faulty experiments, and a node labeled Earth. He quickly downloaded a copy of the cache. He looked back over his shoulder, making sure no one was coming. The download completed and he unhooked from the terminal. Russell crept back through the racks toward the exit. He stumbled on a dropped scanner, knocking off a bio-experiment container. It crashed onto the floor, cracking open. The preserver extended itself taller. Who is there? It crackled. Russell gained his composure and stepped around from the racks. I'm sorry, I was going through the zoo and stepped in here. I didn't mean to knock this off. He pointed down at the container. It wasn't expensive, was it? The small preserver looked down at the container, running the ID tag through its data device. Squishy experiment for the zoomies. The preserver focused on the human. I will have to reformulate the creature. That one is dead now. Please leave. You are wasting my time. Russell put up his hands in front of him. I'm sorry. I was just curious. Typical of humans. Please leave. The preserver crouched down on its three legs and started cleaning up the breakage. Russell stepped out the exit and picked up pace through the main zoo concourse. Stubborn and Slayer had made it to their habitat and settled in. She relieved herself while Slayer had his medical analysis performed. She exited their custom bathroom, and it was her turn. The air and blue speckled preserver took skin scrapings and breath samples. She tolerated it. It was nothing that she hadn't been through with Cookie. After the two creatures left their habitat, Slayer and Stubborn sat in their quiet abode. Stubborn ate from the welcome basket. This food is not good. I want meat. Slayer looked at the food from his seat. Agreed. I will clean out the suits, and then we shall go hunt. She sat down on the floor, eating on some crackers. I like that idea. Slayer cleaned out the suits, wiping out the insides, and then he flashed to her that he was ready. He slid into his suit, his worms creeping into their pack. Stubborn crept over and started putting hers on. After they were dressed again, they exited out their biolock and into the corridor leading back toward the inner station. The two stopped and knelt over a pack of green squishies swaying under the bright overhead lights. These things look too green, she said. I agree, princess. They do not move right. They're not afraid. She reached down and poked it with her gloved claw. The squishy stumbled and straightened. We need tools. Let us continue then. Slayer flashed. The two continued exploring. They entered a massive farm, ceilings higher than they could reach standing on each other. Rows of plants towered over them. Stubborn ran her claw over them, bending the plants. Slayer pulled off a leaf, shredding it apart. Weak, but has some potential. What are you thinking? She asked. He looked over at her. I saw a sign on the main ring. I have an idea. Banfi swam through her designated tank home. She herded her fish up to the light to feed on algae. One of her fish darted towards something away from the school. It caught sight of something and was hunting. 
Banfi watched with curiosity. What had fallen into her tank? Was it edible? What is her fish going to do? The fish struck the small detritus and then disappeared into the air above. She left her fish to the algae and went over to investigate. Banfi rose out of the water and stared at the two creatures holding her fish. They were in suits, and each was focused on the creature held in their claws. Excuse me, Banfi said. Slayer and Stubborn turned and looked at the massive ocean grower peering at them from the water. Slayer moved back, bumping his fishing pole. Stubborn pulled her feet from the water. Do not be afraid. I mean no harm. Stubborn looked at Slayer and then back at Banfi. What? Who are you? She asked. I am Banfi. This is my tank. What and who are you? Stubborn stood up and started flashing. I am she, the princess bit, stung dead yet clung to life out of sheer stubbornness and rage. That's a long name, the large floating creature said. Many here call me stubborn. Fitting, I like it. Banfi rolled her large eye toward the fish. Are you hungry or just curious? Stubborn looked down at the fish. We are hungry. The peoples gave us a gift basket, but it was cold, not moving. We needed to hunt something. Banfi turned and looked at her school. She moved a large tendril and scared the fish near the shore. Here, have some more then. I do not wish you hungry. Slayer stood up, staring at the rolling water. This is pity. We do not need pity. We can hunt on our own. Stubborn put her hand on his chest, stopping him. You are wanting to help us? Banfi bobbed her giant head, creating a small ripple ring. Of course, that is what we do. Stubborn sat back down, putting her feet into the water. He is right. We do not like pity. But this place is very confining. The game is small. There is nothing for us to hunt. It is odd. It was odd for my people arriving too. The shapes and sounds are all wrong. But we were given our water and we have made do. We help those of the clouder as they have helped us stay alive. It all fits if you look. Stubborn kicked at the water. We do not fit yet. It takes time. Everything has a niche. Take some of my fish, eat, live, and in time you will find what you can do here. Slayer reached into the water and pinched a fish between his claws. He pulled it out and sat it beside the other still one. Stubborn reached over and smashed the fish in the head, causing it to go limp. Are we stealing from you? She asked. Banfi looked over them for a moment. Not at all. I have made a significant profit with my school. You're no burden. We owe you anyway. We do not wish to be beggars. You wish to pay me back? Yes, I just said. We are not beggars. Stubborn said curtly. Then I will accept stories as payment. Banfi rolled over so her other eye could see the two. I do not get many visitors. It would be worth some fish just to hear of the worlds beyond. Stubborn looked at Slayer. He flashed. Why not? She seems alone. Stubborn looked back at the water creature and started sharing. <laughs>